Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here, back with another Cyber Insight live stream. Hey, appreciate you coming in, dropping in on a Thursday uh, around lunchtime. Uh, kind of enjoying doing these more midday streams, so uh, if you're checking it out, appreciate that. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about a, a cool feature within Wireshark. The past few weeks we've been diving into one of TriHackMe's newest rooms dealing with packet analysis with Wireshark. And uh, there's a lot of interesting things that we can do with it that kind of might be outside of the, the normal scope of what you might be using it for uh, in your job. So today's stream, we're going to look at a feature that actually allows us to uh, automatically generate firewall and access control lists based off of the individual packets that we're doing analysis on. So uh, we're going to hop over into the other browser and uh, bring up uh, some PCAPs and open up the tool and all that type of stuff. But uh, as we're moving through this, if you got any questions, throw those in the chat. You know, you can do that. Make sure you smash a like button, subscribe to the channel, uh, all that other good stuff. And uh, yeah, just going to hop in over here. Let me bring this up real quick. So I uh, wanted to give a little bit of background here. So uh, the thing that we're looking at today is their feature called Firewall ACL Rules. It's under the, the Tools option. You might not even know it's there. Uh, a lot of times, at least uh, you know, for me and my background, I use Wireshark uh, more so on the engineering and ops side of things. So we'd use it a lot to um, troubleshoot connectivity between uh, different types of devices, make sure that traffic was flowing uh, the way that we were expecting. Then obviously, if you're on the blue t on the blue team side of things, the cyber analysis side of things, uh, then what you're using uh, Wireshark for might be a, a little bit different than what someone on the operational side might be. Uh, but even coming from both of those sides, this might be something that uh, you weren't necessarily aware of. And so I figured it was worth uh, throwing a video together today to talk a little bit about it and uh, how this can help you uh, identify uh, rules that you might want to implement uh, if you end up seeing some traffic in your environment that uh, you shouldn't uh, be expecting to see or you don't want to be seeing and help uh, strengthen the uh, access control list that you have implemented at different points uh, in your architecture. So uh, this firewall ACL rules tool set uh, allows you to create command line ACL rules for different types of firewall products. So this is pretty cool because it hits a few different things. So you can do Cisco iOS. It actually supports both uh, standard and extended. Sorry, Nexus fans, <laughs> if you uh, are using Cisco Nexus switches, you're going to have to do a little bit of conversion here. But, you know, if you're using Cisco, then, you know, you're using probably iOS and NXOS. So you're you're used to having to convert uh, ACLs back and forth between those. Uh, have IP tables, which is awesome. Uh, OpenBSD, uh, Packet Filter, uh, Windows Firewall, and I think there's a few other options uh, that are in there that we can take a look at. And so pretty much it allows you to create rules depending upon the particular uh, ACL that you're creating. You can either go off of IP address, TCP, uh, UDP ports, source and destination ports, combining source ports and uh, source IPs, destination ports, destination IPs, or even MAC addresses. So uh, pretty cool. Now, if you want to play around with this, what I'm doing today is I'm actually using a sample uh, PCAP. It was one that we covered uh, in this Wireshark 101 room. This is actually a, a great room. If you haven't checked this out, uh, let me see. This is a subscriber only room, so it isn't free. But if you do have a subscription to try hack me and you want to learn about Wireshark, I highly recommend uh, hopping on this room. If you want a little bit of a tutorial walkthrough, I also uh, did one with Kiki uh, last last year. Um, I'll throw the description or I should say I'll throw the link in the description for this if you want to follow along and do that. And another great resource as far as just learning about different types of traffic with Wireshark. Um, if you go to uh, this wiki page for Wireshark, and I, I put a link for this in the video description as well, um, there is a whole bunch of different types of PCAPs for various types of ports and protocols, uh, different types of traffic uh, that you might be interested in seeing what this actually looks like from a packet perspective. So you can always grab these download this, throw it into Wireshark. Because remember, Wireshark, we can do analysis based off of live traffic that's coming in and out of your system. 
or you can actually load uh, PCAP files in there and do uh, analysis after the fact. So this is a, a, a great option for uh, learning uh, both how to use Wireshark and then analysis of different types of traffic. So let's hop over into Wireshark. The, uh, the PCAP that I'm using today, like I said, I pulled it from here. It's the uh, zero login PCAP. Um, so let's see. Let's move over here. Just give me a second to switch my windows here. Wireshark. There we go. That looks good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we can just go ahead. We can highlight any type of packet. So we can go ahead and let's see. What am I looking at here? Looking at this packet. 445 so down here this uh, 1123 and we see uh, destination port 445 so using it for SMB and let's say that we saw this information we saw this packet on our network and we're like ooh, we we don't like that we want to uh, find some ways that we can block this at different points in the environment so that's where this tool uh, the firewall ACL rules tool up here helps us out and we can click that and that's going to give us a whole bunch of different options. So as, let's just kind of start at the top with Cisco IOS uh, standard. I mean, this is very basic, you know, that the standard Cisco rules really is only going to block by IP, but based off of this, you can block off of the, the source port or the source address in this rule or the des destination uh, IP in this packet, uh, we also could do it reverse. So maybe we saw something that uh, was coming through, but maybe uh, we weren't seeing the response traffic coming back and we were trying to figure out, okay, we think this is being blocked somewhere. How can we generate uh, an ACL that will actually permit this traffic? So that's another use case you could use it for. Um, so there's a Cisco Iowa standard. The um, extended version, obviously, we get into source and destination IP address and also uh, source and destination port. So it gives us a whole bunch of different options if we want to block the, the source address, destination address, source port, destination port, and then a combination of source address and source port or destination address and destination port. Um, this might be uh, the one that might be more interesting if you want to make sure that you're not going to 445. Uh, again, this gives you the option of doing either uh, inbound or it will actually flip it around the other way. Um, so that's also an important thing to understand um, when you're using a tool like this. And this is something you, get, you just kind of have to learn depending upon uh, the particular type of ACLs that you're using. Um, is where you're applying the ACL, whether it's an inbound or outbound fashion. And taking that into account also with the flow of the data within the PCAP. So uh, important to understand data flows and how that all works. Folks working on the uh, cyber analysis side definitely are aware of the importance of that. And then uh, also, you know, engineers, network engineers, folks working on security devices, obviously need to know the importance of that as well. But just something to take into account if you, you know, copy and paste something from here and you're expecting it to work. You do have to have uh, the context of which way you're actually applying it um, on an interface or on a zone, uh, depending upon the type of device that you're uh, trying to put it on. Yo, Marcus, what's up, man? Appreciate you dropping in at lunchtime. So, uh, yeah, so that's the Cisco iOS, both uh, standard and extended. Then we get into uh, IP filter, and they have a, for IP firewall as well. I think these are, let's see, IP tables is one that you're definitely going to hit up a lot. This is actually the one that probably would be um, the most beneficial to me. I always mess around fumble through IP tables uh, configurations. It's always like find one that you know is working and then uh, modify that to do what it is that you're trying to do. So uh, definitely helpful from here. I think the other cool thing 
with IP tables um, is that you're also able to do it uh, with MAC addresses, um, especially since that's in the PCAP as well, then uh, that's pretty beneficial that you're able to, uh, to add that and use that as a uh, method for either permitting or denying the traffic. Have a packet filter. I think that packet filter might be a BSD, free BSD type of ACL. I'm trying to remember. Have a few different options between IP filter, IP firewall, and packet filter. And I forget which one actually deals with uh, BSD stuff. Um, and then the last option that we have here is uh, Windows Firewall. So pretty cool that it does that. So this is really, uh, you know, this is add port opening or add port opening and then IP address and really just using the disable command with those. It's cool. You can tie, you know, a name back to that. Again, with Windows Firewall, it's the same as what I was mentioning with uh, Cisco stuff and, and other devices. Uh, when you go to create these within Windows, you have the option of it being uh, inbound or outbound rule. You set that, and then depending upon which direction you're looking, then you would uh, modify, you know, if you're talking about uh, using the destination IP address or the source IP address in the rule that you're putting in there. So uh, that was pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of make uh, some folks aware that this is, is an option especially if you're going down the path of starting to learning about uh, security engineering, starting to get into uh, learning about ACLs and firewall rules. Why not uh, use a tool that's going to kind of help you generate uh, what those rules are? Uh, you can go ahead and use this in a lab, right? I mean, so you have traffic going back and forth. You can use uh, Wireshark to actually grab the PCAP for that. And then you can go ahead and implement rules different places to try to block that traffic or permit it, you know, on your Windows box, on your Cisco devices that might be going through the lab, uh, IP tables, all that type of good stuff. So uh, any questions before we wrap this one up? We're going to continue um, doing the uh, Wireshark PCAP analysis room. I think we got four more tasks in that. And actually, I'm going to have Kiki back on the channel next week. To, uh, to do the HTTP and HTTPS portions of that. So that's pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Um, I'm trying to think what else we're, we're going to be wrapping up. I think we're going to be wrapping up the uh, Windows um, local persistence room. I think we have a, a few more tasks in that. And uh, I'm actually going to be back to doing some uh, CCMP and CCNA labs. Already started working on a new uh, BGP lab. Hopefully we'll be doing that sometime in the next few weeks. So uh, yeah, if nothing else. I appreciate everybody checking this out. If you have any questions, you can drop those in the comments. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that other good stuff. Uh, hope everybody has a great Thursday and uh, yeah, we will, uh, we'll chat soon. All right.